Hey everyone, this week Boris Johnson finally achieved his lifelong ambition of becoming Prime Minister, and I guess becoming Prime Minister is one of the few things in life where you actually want to copy something Theresa May did, obviously ignore everything she did afterwards. Anyway, long before Boris had even gotten out of the car, there was of course wailing and gnashing of teeth from the media lovies with words like mandate and democracy being bandied around utterly shamelessly. No doubt those in the entertainment sector would prefer to have some sort of Prime Minister competition involving a premium rate phone number like they do on the telly, especially if at the last minute they can just change the results if they don't like it like they do on the telly. Boris is a polarising figure of mine, but as long as all of his ex-wives and girlfriends don't live in one big swing constituency, he should be okay. Back to how we arrived here, though. A lot of people banked on Theresa May stopping Brexit, and they bet on the wrong horse, proving once again that the only political bet you should make is that one about what colour tie the Chancellor will be wearing during the budget. Theresa was about as good at convincing people as a contestant on Big Brother, trying to convince people that they've read the original George Orwell book, or indeed any book. Big Brother's an odd one, really. It's one of the few shows where contestants go on to write more books than they've read. Anyway, Boris Johnson's by no means a unifying person, but in the vacuum of any substantiated policy or motivation so far, most people are just curious to see what he intends to do, beyond generating sound bites for the news. So on Thursday, there was all sorts of interesting barnstorming speeches and responses given, all drama, all shouty, all seemingly given following a heavy night's drinking by many in Westminster, at least according to the red complexions on show. The SNP leader Ian Blackford made a point about Boris having no mandate, despite Nicola Sturgeon having faced neither a contender nor a vote. And Gordon Brown made the same point a few days ago, seemingly forgetting about the unelected years he spent at number 10, although maybe he's tried as hard as the rest of us to forget that they ever happened. Brown is likely not the only person from Kilcoddy with three years unexplained that they claim not to remember when asked. Oh well, let's see how the next week goes before we race to judge, I suppose. One thing I will say about Boris is that during the 2011 London riots, he was the one that, as mayor, went out to talk to the crowds and try to calm the situation down personally, whereas Home Secretary Theresa May disappeared and drove off in a big Jaguar. Sign of things to come, I guess, changing of the guards and all. Anyway, see you next week, and if you like these, click subscribe.